Hey, it's Tree, and I'm back for another video. So, on this day, I did all the coloring and line art for page 13 of chapter 2. Chapter 2 is now finished. We will be now going on to chapter 3. If you're new here, you can read Wakefield on Webtoons and Pass. I post every Friday. Today, I wanted to discuss comic buffers. If you're going to post your comics online, it's very important to have a buffer. Um, speaking from experience, when you don't have a buffer, you're always rushing to get them pages out. And it's ten times harder once you've like fallen off the track to get back on track. And more often than not, you'll probably end up taking a hiatus because you're trying to catch up with your buffer. So what exactly are comic buffers? Basically... There are updates you can post right away. They're already ready. You don't have to draw anything. Um, specifically on uh, Webtoons and to Pass, you can schedule your posts. And they'll already be ready and you don't have to do anything. Or you can just keep them private and post them when you want to. Now, if you do it on Webtoons, though, you have to schedule them in order... Uh, by date or else they won't let you schedule say page 9 before page 10 because you already scheduled page 10 let's put it that way and then to pass they don't really do that so you could schedule things whenever you want to so how exactly do you determine how many buffers you need um, for artists it can vary person by person uh, for me, I have a lot, um, but that's because I got suddenly very fast at drawing and now they're, they're done. Um, currently Wakefield has eight posts scheduled and ready to post, um, and I'm still working on chapter five, so <laughs> I have a lot. Um, the reason it varies person to person is just basically people decide buffers based on how they feel they need a buffer for. Say you're in classes and you want to schedule all your posts in a row to where you're like done with the semester and that way you don't have to worry about your comic while you're doing your school stuff. Let's put it that way. Or just you take a long time to draw and so you make a lot and then save them all and post them all at once or in a row. I definitely think the easiest method is to see how much you can draw in a time period. Say it takes you a couple of hours to finish your comic because it's all black and white. And then basically go from there. Because you know how much you can draw in a set time period better than anyone else. And um, another thing definitely to keep in mind is that you shouldn't feel bad that people can draw faster than you. It just means you need to be smarter about scheduling your posts, I guess. Um, make as many updates as you can. And then just hold off from posting them until they're all ready to go. And then you're not scrambling to finish things as much. Um, and in that time while you're trying to finish your pages, um, more often than not, you're slowly going to get faster and faster at drawing them and find tips and tricks uh, on how to draw faster. One of the things that helped me draw faster that I know not everyone can do is that um, I ended up getting a new screen tablet and now I can draw a lot faster because there's more space for my hand to move and uh, my previous tablet I just felt like I was very cramped and it's hard to draw that way. Um, other things that could help you draw faster, um, I used to spend a lot of time like hand picking the colors from different pages and I got a lot faster once I figured out a setting on say to where basically I could save all the colors that I needed and now I don't spend as much time hunting down the colors. Another trick to that if you can't do that is um, make a design document of your character's clothing and things 
and then you could pick colors just from that. Um, or another method to get faster at drawing is to simplify your characters a little bit. Uh, sometimes uh, I get in the habit of drawing characters with way too many details and uh, sometimes you gotta sit down and realize that you don't need to put that many details. Uh, your comic will be just as readable with or without that. Um, and again, like I said before, another thing is that as you're drawing pages and getting used to it, it gets a lot faster, um, mainly because you find tips and tricks. Like, uh, say you're spending too long drawing a character a certain way, um, it's very easy to just simplify that and move on. Or, uh, sometimes I spend a lot of time on backgrounds, and um, you don't always have to spend a lot of time on backgrounds. Uh, some comics people will, um, they'll leave the backgrounds white, but also, like, in that page that, like, they'll have at least one background or two. And that works, too. There's nothing wrong with taking shortcuts, because it's what you want to do, and if that's what you want to do, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's pretty normalized within the community, so you don't have to feel bad. If you start taking shortcuts. Um, some people will go so far as to um, have assets for objects that the characters are holding. And if that saves you time, then go at it. Um, but I think the important thing to realize, if you're doing shortcuts, that's a personal decision you need to make. And that if you're happy with how the pages look with the shortcuts, leave them. Do it. But if you're not, maybe you'll have to spend more time on your assets and uh, draw your own. Or you can um, just not do them. But yeah, that's definitely some methods of how to get faster at drawing. As well as just the general practice of drawing more and more every day will make you get faster. Another thing that I didn't talk about, though, is that, um, sometimes, uh, when you first start drawing, you have, like, bases you used to draw, and over time, the more I've drawn, the more I don't need them anymore, and sometimes I just simplify it to, like, a circle, and then a part for the chin, and, uh, maybe one day you'll realize that you don't need as many, uh, under bases to draw with and that'll definitely make pages go faster um or you can make an entirely black and white comic but um i'm not sure if this is true or not so some people say that like you're less likely to get featured on webtoons in the past if your color is not in color if your comic is not in color um again i don't know how true that is but that might be something you want to keep in mind Another fun exercise that you can do to see uh, how long you're drawing is just to time yourself and then draw in a shorter amount of time and see if you can beat that timer from your last time. Um, I know there's a challenge where it's like uh, 10 minute drawing versus 5 minute drawing and uh, you could do that to see if you can draw faster that way. Another thing that I do that not necessarily everyone would do is that um, I take the time to film the process of my comic pages for Wakefield and then edit them and post them and uh, talk over them like I am now. And if you're doing that, maybe uh, you don't have to. <laughs> Because it certainly takes a lot of time out of uh, making comics because you're busy filming yourself and stuff. Yeah, I don't know if everybody does that kind of stuff, but maybe you're doing that and it could save you some time by not doing it. But um, I think the most important thing about like buffers and things is that um, I feel like the goal with them is that it saves you time and you don't have to draw as much and as fast 
but also it gives you time to spend time with your family because your life doesn't all have to be about art and there's all kinds of stuff you can do um one of the things I do when I relax is play video games and that's okay you can have time off from creating your comic and nothing's going to change. Your comic will still be there at the end of the day. But anyway, I feel like that's all I really have to say about comic buffers. <laughs> and I feel like I've rambled for a very long time. But if you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe. And I upload on this channel every Thursday. Thank you.